The last thing we need on this shuttle is more uncertainty. Will you give Emmett the token of your affection? Let's keep it professional, bro. I'm not trying to do all that, alright? Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton. I'm your humble narrator. Welcome back to 60 Parsecs. Uh, we crash landed. I mean, we landed, but we also crashed uh, on a robotic alien planet. And the women are now extremely hurt. You can see old lady got some blood coming out of her head. You know, uh, this lady spilled her coffee cup everywhere. <laughs> so we're gonna have to... We're gonna have to do something. Probably the first thing that I want to do is send out somebody exploring. But we should see what our decision to make is. Captain, we are unable to detect transmissions of unknown origins. Unfortunately, the communications console was damaged during landing and we can't make anything out of them. Or reply for that matter. We could hardwire a primitive field communicator to bypass the damaged subsystems and access the shuttle's external transmitter and receiver. Yes, make it so. I'm gonna send somebody out into the wastes. Tourist information. Alright, well, we'll get some tourist information. Chance for electricity. Hazards? Grass. Oh, not grass. Not Emmett. Emmett did everything in the first episode. I'm like, fix this, Emmett. Fix that, Emmett. Baby Bronco, you're you're the one to go. I'm sorry. I, I just don't want to be like, you know, racist or whatever. Uh, I should bring the battery because there's a chance for electricity. And what else? What else? I guess armor is probably a good, a good thing for whatever that hazard is. Is it fire or is it grass? I don't really know. I don't really know. All right, let's let's see how it goes. Maybe somebody can come back with some soup before we all end up dying. I don't have any anything that I'm able to craft. I could recycle some stuff, but I don't really want to do that either. Hopefully Baby Bronco can get out there and, and just find the goodies. Find them goodies! I'll be like, hi, I'm a tourist. Uh, can you feed me? <laughs> That's not what we do here. We serve up information only, sir. Hello, world! Great success, Captain. The communicator attached to the communications console worked like a charm. I won't receive the aesthetics since we can... I won't judge the aesthetics since we can finally receive and answer transmissions. Now all we need to do is wait for someone to contact us. Someone will find us, eventually. The crew was visibly excited by this incredible feat of engineering. They were only slightly smirking while looking at the patch communications console. Tomorrow will be great, Captain. Baby left to gather some information about our surroundings from the tourism center. Let's hope he finds something more than dusty brochures and tacky souvenirs. That's what I'm saying. You should take care of your injuries, Captain. You're still in poor health. Ah, crap. I need to feed the ladies again, too. Alright, here's some soup for you, and, uh, Captain gets soup and some first aid. I guess I'm gonna have to recycle something. You gotta make the hard decisions, you know? I'll recycle this artifact. I don't think the robots have any interest in that. I am a machine, and machines cannot hear voices. The voices that I'm not hearing right now are getting very loud, though. Oh, you hear him too? My weight sensors are picking up something as well. A two-dimensional species. That explains why my cameras missed them. Quite vicious, I gather. With one decisive yell, the voices are approaching fast. The air inside the door looks very empty, yet very hostile all of a sudden. How will you defend us? With fire! Because that's basically the only thing I have at my disposal right now. But it should work. Okay. Great success! Tell me! Tell me what you're doing here! Two-dimensional species invaded your ship. You couldn't see them coming until you turned on a lighter. Suddenly, the empty space around you cast a multitude of shadows on every wall. Invisible to the 3D world most of the time, they could not handle the spotlight. Bashfully, they slipped out one by one. Staring might be impolite, but apparently rudeness wins battles. You all look bolder and stand a little straighter since the victory. Alright! I need to get a first aid kit for Megan. I need to get some rations for Emmett. Yes, yes. Well, let's uh, recycle some more shit, I guess. God damn, I don't have anything. This is really bad. Alright, recycle the mask, I suppose. Interesting news, Captain. It appears that there's a hollow space behind one of the wall panels. A hidden room, maybe? A secret stash? It would be worth checking out. What's your approach to finding out what's behind the panel? Agilita! Of course! Mmm. Alright. Hopefully baby gets back soon. 
He's strong. He can carry a lot of shit. But uh, I think he's also slow. That agility. And also that brain. <laughs> Yesterday, you reached a hidden space behind one of the wall panels. The only way to get in there was through the ventilation shaft. But thankfully, you were nimble enough to fit in and exit through the other side. You found a gun in the concealed area. Who left it there? For what purpose? Ah, mysteries. They make the galaxy turn, don't they? Alright, Megan is in poor health. Recycling operations completed. We are awaiting contact currently. I'm gonna craft that first aid kit ASAP. It's gonna take three days. Fuck. Emmett's still hungry. I'm sorry, bro. I'm so sorry. One of the robotic denizens of the planet is eager to test himself against you, Captain. He's letting you make a choice between a test of wits or physical prowess to prove his superiority. Logic riddles or running around the shuttle to see who makes the most rounds before giving up? Which one shall it be? Well, I, I wish he'd picked agility like a foot race, but I'll go for intelligence, I suppose. Um, we should craft a soup. I'm gonna craft a soup for Emmett real quick. Just to kind of tide me over. Hopefully Megan's not gonna die from her injuries. She's been bleeding from her head for like quite a few days now. I'm sorry. Not sure what you expected going into a contest of logic puzzles with an automaton, Captain. The robot offered you a conundrum that stumped you, and the crew's emotional support did nothing to help. The robot gave the solution to the puzzle. It was actually quite simple. Humbled by defeat, you and the crew spent the rest of the day brooding. Whoa, Emmett is starving. Fuck. Don't cry. Don't cry, bro. It's gonna be fine. Get that first aid kit for Megan. Such a good captain. See that lock safe in the corner, Captain? This is the Captain's safe. It's meant for you. You have the code, of course. No? Does not compute. You were really appointed the Captain of Astro Citizen Command. Were you really appointed the Captain? Yes, I was. Don't fucking question me, computer. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt for now. Since you don't have the code, will you try to open the safe by force, or are you going to rely on your dexterity? Dude, fucking thief skills for the win. Lock picking 100. I hope baby comes back. I think he's coming back today. I think. Come on, there he is. Look at him. Look at him there. So about the save, you managed to crack the code. I knew you were nimble-fingered enough to get that done. The only thing inside was a piece of paper which read, To do. Put something useful in the safe. Thanks for nothing. Baby's returned safely from his expedition. He says he's a bit hungry. While scanning his body, I detect some mental imbalances and a little weakness. The path was rocky. Literally, the uneven surface of this planet makes the real, real easy to trip and fall. The armors lost the battle against the sharp rocks. The Taurus Center let Cashier let Baby plug his battery into a free outlet. How nice of them. The outpost was mostly empty save for one bored, dusty robot who gave Baby a few power cells as a welcome gift. The Taurus Center employee explained to Baby in a series of bored beeps and distorted words the way to the museum and the library. Later, Baby found an artifact. Who scattered all these cans so far away from Earth? Weird. Anyway, Baby has returned bearing soup. Oh, Megan is no more. Her wounds were too severe. God damn it. Well, that's how it goes sometimes, I guess. Ah, <sighs> weak and tired. So does he need the health kit? Well, we haven't even crafted the health kit yet, so I, I don't know what to tell you. I'm gonna get Emmett some food, and then I'm gonna send him out into the wastes. We got the library, we got the museum. Let's go check out the museum. Chance for minerals and guns. Hmm. Chance for chemicals and books. Yeah, let's do that. And he's he's a smart guy, so he should enjoy the uh, the library. The library. You can bring some tape and I guess the battery. Why not? Why not? Whatever. Oh god, two days left for the fucking first aid kit. I hope maybe Bronco's gonna be okay. Megan, Megan dead. I don't know what happened. Megan dead. Go ahead and uh, feed Dee Dee some soup. Captain, the transmission was received while you were asleep. I took the liberty of decoding the message for you. What I found were geographical coordinates leading to a place not far from here. Oh, the message also mentions you should bring a sock puppet with you. It doesn't say why. While you answer the call, I cannot. I do apologize. And good luck on your journey, Emmett. We'll see you quite soon. Don't forget to bring some soup. But yeah, I think soup is a rarity on this planet. 
When you reached the location from the transmission's coordinates, you could see somebody sneaking off into the dark behind a big rock. A little suspicious, although you did not bring the sock puppet the stranger asked for. How forgetful of you. Emmett left to visit the local library. Perhaps he will come back richer in more than just supplies. Yes, let us hope. Baby appears to be weak. Ah, uh, baby's asking for rations. Dang. I really should have had a sock puppet. It's part of the goals. Fart. Family of robotic nomads set up camp nearby. Captain, their elder wants to meet you and baby. My scans show they don't have any weapons, not even sharp sticks. How will you approach them? Strongly. We don't want them to get any ideas. You know what I mean? Don't give them no ideas. Just walk up be like, hey, I'm both for shit. I'm both for shit, alright? You march to the robot camp trying to act tough, but the robots didn't buy it. You do know we're pacifists here, right? The family elder said. You left the robot camp wondering if a more peaceful approach might have been better. By morning, the automaton family was gone. Fart. Fuck that one up. Let's upgrade some stuff. Mmm, crafting module upgrade. Ooh. I'm gonna upgrade this armor. Seems like a good idea. Captain, I'm detecting a humanoid figure approaching. It's a robot jittering along toward us, evidently blind. It's walked right up to the shovel and is now clanging on the hull repeatedly. The pitiful thing appears to be malfunctioning. Leave it to its mind-numbed fate or attempt to communicate. Well, we can't really communicate because I don't have a communicator. I don't have the supplies to build a communicator. I mean, I got a communicator, but it's fucking shoved in the communications console at the moment. Can I rip it out? Can I use it to communicate with him? God damn. <sighs> it's rough in space. Just before you and baby could shut the door after taking a look at the robot still moshing at the at the hull outside, its vice-like grip clutched onto the airlock handle. The droid pulled open the door with incredible strength, then walked into the cabin where it began knocking into the walls and screaming in binary. It didn't seem to want to hurt you or anything. This morning it woke from its stupor and left clutching its head unit. Must have been the morning after the night before. <laughs> the morning after the night before. But the sleepless night, along with the image of the robot standing at the, your feet as you slept, left you and your crewmate more on edge than ever. Baby appears to still be in poor health. Oh, crap. Come on. Come on. We gotta heal him up. That's what we gonna do. Uh, we could upgrade the gun. Probably a good idea. A sweet old man, looking like Charles Darwin, is knocking at our airlock politely. When you let him in, he shakes your hand, then holds it with an iron grip and won't let go. With technology, evolution stops. Soviet scientists want our species to stay strong, so they created me, the natural selection bot. He claims it's for your own good, which is what the dentist always said, and you didn't believe him either. You've let me in despite the warning signs. Now face your space predator, human. He does have a point, Captain. Oh, I can see why you'd want to postpone the discussion. Defend yourself! All, all I got is some armor. I guess that'll work. I have the gun, but it's it's being repaired. I locked in the in the crafting console. I'm sorry. I didn't expect this. A Darwinian pred predator droid held you in its grip. You thrust yourself back and with one slip... One s swift motion slipped the armor on. It pulled a gun and shot, but your armor held. You brace yourself, and what the droid did was far worse than anything you could have imagined. Charles Darwin burst into tears. I was so afraid I would have to kill you, it said. And you shared the sentiment. But you're excellent at defending yourself. Thus, you are worthy to survive. I'm so glad. It hugged you tight, like a very friendly boa, and left. Alright. Captain needs some rations, though. I got nothing. I got nothing. Let's upgrade this artifact. See what happens. Rations can wait for another day. I think uh, Emmett should be coming back soon anyways. Uh, Captain, when the sun rose this morning, our ship was surrounded by sigils. Sigils? Sigils. Little bars of metal welded together to form a stick-like... Stick figure-like shapes. Stick figure-like. <laughs> Directly outside the door was a pile of ball be bearings stacked up. Nearby, a little empty ring was drawn in the dirt. Something's toying with us. Do you wish to leave an offering in the rich ritual ring, venture out at night with some protection, or just try to ignore these frankly creepy goings-on? Can I cancel this, uh... Yeah. Cancel this. Let's recycle something. Hmm. 
plus 30. I'll recycle the lighter, I guess. And I'll put the artifact out. Here. I'll put this in your ritual ring. I don't want to give up my fucking armor. Not on your life, son! And I think Emmett should be back. Hey! Hey, buddy! After the strange sigils and symbols appeared around the shuttle, you decide to leave the artifact we found in the little ring drawn in the dirt. The next morning, all the creepy detritus had been removed, and all that remained was the artifact, now patched up with bits of melted metal. How they managed that, it doesn't bear thinking about. Let's just be artifactful that it didn't end horribly. Emmett returned from his library excursion quite exhausted, probably from all the happy reading. He complains about a rumbling stomach. I judge his mental state to be a little off. Emmett says the library is a little boring, but nevertheless impressive. Rows of screens, thousands of data disks on display everywhere. Emmett slipped on some data disks lying around and stumbled into a pitch black room. He fell a few times and banged his head pretty hard while finding his way back to the main corridor. The library's personal maintenance room had a machine on the wall. Emmett said it was like a cigarette machine, but when a battery was connected, it spat out power cells instead. Emmett did learn something useful during the trip. When he came back, he pointed out a few things around the shuttle that we could repurpose for crafting. Excellent. Emmett got lucky and found a simple science textbook from Earth in the children's section. Wonder how it got there. Emmett picked up a working communicator. Got some soup. God damn. This trip had the potential to uncover technology the Astro Citizen creators could only dream of, if only the human mind weren't so limited. Alright. Well, Emmett's in poor health. We need to get him patched up. And we need to get, uh, Cap'n fed. Mm -hmm. Baby Bronco, you could also eat. Uh, should we craft something? I guess first aid kit is the most important thing. We got a good amount of resources now, so... Go for it! Captain, remember that transmission we received recently? The one with mysterious coordinates? Uh, it's back. Whoever's sending it must still be waiting there. Oh god, we should do the, the sock puppet instead first. I'm sorry, Emmett. I'm sorry, Emmett! I'm gonna send Baby Bronco out. Museum or village? I think he'd like going to the village. Wouldn't you? What a nice trip. Uh, bring this book that we found. And the battery's probably a good idea. There's a chance for ore, so I wish we had a shovel, but it's not to be. Maybe the book and the gun. Okay. That'll do. Still don't have the sock puppet, I'm sorry. I'm fucking sorry, okay? Did the best I could. Ah, it's terrible. Just terrible. Well, good luck on the expedition. When you reach the location from the transmission's coordinates, you could see somebody sneaking off. Oh. Damn. I get that sock puppet together. Don't you worry. Emmett is feeling weak. Alright, after the sock puppet. After the sock puppet, we're gonna get some fucking first aid. Emmett wants to know what your relationship status is. And I don't mean who's getting the bigger rations of soup. Well, I may not be keen on all the nuances of human relationships. It's clear Emmett has formed a special emotional attachment to you. You're romantically unattached. Perhaps clarifying your relationship status with Emmett would be best for the both of you. The last thing we need on this shuttle is more uncertainty. Will you give Emmett the token of your affection? Let's keep it professional, bro. I'm not trying to do all that, alright? I ain't about it. Not today. Not ever. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> you did not give Emmett anything to show him you were serious about a relationship. Emmett's feelings were hurt. Emmett still appears weak. Ah, oh, we crafted a high quality item. Cutting edge sock. Sweet. But now I need to craft this fucking first aid kit before Emmett drops dead. I'm glad I finally convinced you to go out for a little while around the shuttle and stretch a little outside. Even if I, you claim I forced you with my constant whining, it's for your own good, Captain. When you stepped outside, you noticed a small asteroid coming right at you. You tried to run back inside, but it looks like the airlock snapped shut behind you. I need a moment to reopen the doors, so you need to figure out a way to deal with the asteroid yourself. Will you dodge out of the way gracefully, or grab the nearest flat and heavy rock to act as a makeshift shield? Pretty easy question. Agility! Agility time! Is the baby coming back today? Or is it going to be another three days? I don't know. He could show up when the first aid kit is created, and that, that would not be good. 
You definitely dodged the asteroid, asteroid's path and, when the dust settled, confirmed you're in one piece. Upon further inspection, the asteroid reminded you of partially chewed bubblegum. This gave you a few ideas about the scale of the universe and its inhabitants that you weren't too keen to entertain. Alright, get some rations for myself in the next episode. Anyways, friends, that's where I'm going to call it. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, and to subscribe. If you did enjoy, that is massively appreciated. It helps the channel to get out there. If you think uh, somebody out there would enjoy 60 parsecs, feel free to show them this video. It's, it's good to spread the word. You know what I'm saying? Uh, also, please check out the links in the description. We've got Twitter, Discord, Patreon. It's where you can usually find me. Uh, I'd like to give a huge, huge shout-out to MMX Akira and Nico the Legend for supporting us on Patreon currently. Thank you boys so much. I can't, I can't explain in words how grateful I am. Um, anyways, that's going to be it for now, for today. We will be back with it quite soon. Thank you once again for watching, friends. This has been 60 Parsecs. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. I shall see you in the next one. And until then, friends, bye bye One, two, three, four. Goodbye, goodbye, see you again. Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friends.